Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte Black Hat Edition. I'm Corey Knockreiner, and today I'm talking about the danger in picking up random USB keys. Before I start, last week I attended the Black Hat and DEF CON security conferences, and that was why I wasn't able to put up many videos last week. So this week I'm going to actually share some of my favorite presentations from both those conferences. I'm starting with a pretty simple but interesting presentation called Does Dropping USB Keys Really Work? by a researcher called Ellie uh, Bernstein. Basically, he was asking a question that is very common in the security industry. Often you'll hear security experts talk about a technique attackers might use. They might drop some USB keys in front of your business's entrance in hopes that maybe someone picks up a USB key, plugs it in, and it automatically infects that victim. In fact, this is something you might have seen in entertainment like movies or TV shows. For instance, last season on Mr. Robot, Darlene dropped a bunch of USB keys hoping the police would plug one in and get infected. In any case, Bernstein wanted to know whether or not this technique was just a myth or if it would really work. So he decided to partner with the University of Illinois to actually quantify this. What he did was he actually created 297 USB keys. Now there's a lot of different ways a USB key can infect your computer when you plug it in. For instance, it might leverage something called autoplay in Windows to automatically run a script. There might be some zero day like the Stuxnet zero day that allowed USB keys to automatically run files files, or perhaps it uses some sort of social engineering where you have to click a file on the USB key for something bad to happen. Finally, there's some hacking tricks where you can actually create a USB key that works as a human interface device. So it might just look like a normal USB key, but it can pretend to be a USB keyboard, and once it does that, it can actually type commands on your computer and do bad stuff. This is similar to Hack5's rubber ducky. Anyways, for this research, they created 297 social engineering USB keys. Uh, the university was a little afraid of the types of attacks that worked automatically, so instead they had USB keys that had a number of fake files that were actually HTML5 documents. And if a user actually interacted with the document, it would connect back to a command and control site that the researchers had to give them statistics about what file they clicked and whether or not they interacted. Now these files pretended to be all kinds of things from pictures to confidential documents and so on. Bernstein's volunteers dropped 297 of these keys at different places on the campus. What they found was of 297 USB keys dropped, 98% of the keys were picked up and taken somewhere, but more importantly, 45%, almost half of those 297 keys, weren't only plugged into a computer, but the victim ran one of the files on the keys, which in the real world could cause you to become infected by some sort of malware. So anyways, this proves that this technique is not only real, but it's relatively effective. Over half of the victims not only plugged in a key, but they actually interacted with a file. And by the way, if the researchers had used one of the more automated attacks, the amount of infected victims could have been much higher. Now besides this great research project, the second half of Bernstein's presentation uh, had to do with how you can make an automated attack USB stick. Basically he used something called a Teensy, which is a tiny microcomputer, and he turned that into a USB device, but usually this would look like some sort of duct taped homemade USB stick. So he also went the extra mile to create a latex mold, copy a real USB stick's actual shell, and create what looked identical to a USB storage device, but really it was an attack USB stick. If you're interested in more details, I'll be sure to post links to his research. Anyways, this was a very interesting talk. It proved that the simple technique of just dropping USB sticks is an effective attack. So you're probably asking, what can I do about this? Well, obviously you can't just epoxy all your USB ports. You have to allow your users to plug things in and out. Now, there is software out there that allows you to manage USB devices. You can pick which kind are allowed, and maybe even have an administrator have to put a login every time something new is plugged in. But to be honest, I think a lot of those solutions are hard for IT organizations to maintain because they carry an additional support burden. So I think the best advice is simply good old-fashioned user awareness. Make sure your users are somewhat suspicious of USB keys. Make sure that they know that just plugging a USB device in does carry some danger. There are attacks out there that can be automated and just work when you plug the device in. And do note that they should be skeptical of files on USB devices that they're not familiar with because maybe they're a phishing attack of some sort. At the very least, make sure you have antivirus software that's capable of scanning files of a new USB storage device whenever it's plugged in. 
Anyways, it was a very interesting talk. Be sure to check out the researcher's link. That's it for today's story. Thank you for watching.